Hello, my name is Bruce Peterson. Um, I'm the EMEA lead for um, AdWords platform. Um, my team and I work with, actually quite a few of you already, but uh, we work with you on user acquisition and engagement campaigns uh, through AdWords. So this is all the paid advertising, which I'm sure you're all looking forward to. Um, so to kick us off, this is a, a lightning session, so I'm gonna be covering a few topics, maximizing your user engagement through our different channels, uh, retention and, and uh, lifetime value, as well as data insights and, uh, and management. So we did a brief study of some, of, um, some users to ask them what ads prompted them to download an app. And not too surprisingly, 50% of the users were prompted to download an app from a search ad. This is followed by the middle two, which is basically uh, running campaigns on our ad mob or, um, and mobile web channels, so display network. And lastly, video ads through channels such as YouTube. Uh, we know that video has been traditionally more of an awareness type of campaign. We expect this to change going forward with a few new releases coming out uh, hopefully towards the end of this year. So let's kick it off. Uh, we're absolutely delighted with the launch of search ads in play. We have seen fantastic results, although it's very early days, uh, with increased volume, lower CPIs, and the user quality is absolutely fantastic. The campaigns are really easy to set up as well. All you have to do is go into the AdWords interface, create a search campaign, uh, set up with a few keywords, um, and if you're stuck for keywords, there's a keyword suggestion tool, and run Conversion Optimizer. Conversion Optimizer optimizes towards the target CPI that you choose. Your ads will then show across Google.com and the Play Store, uh, driving people to actually install your ads. It's a very simple campaign structure, and the performance, once again, has been fantastic. One of our bread and butter channels is acquiring users through AdMob and mobile web. We know this has been performing well. It's uh, two channels that really drive a lot of volume and reach. Once again, the setup is easy. You upload a few text ads. Uh, we would encourage you to use video. Uh, video interstitials have a far higher conversion rate. Uh, target run of network and allow conversion optimizer to find the best users for you um, at your target CPI. And finally, YouTube. As I mentioned a few slides back, YouTube has traditionally been an awareness uh, type of channel. However, what we've seen is that you can get phenomenal results there on highly engaged users. And hopefully with the launch of Conversion Optimizer towards the end of this year, we'll be able to scale user acquisition at a target CPI across YouTube, qualifying the users before they download your app. So if you had to run each of these channels individually, this is the standard campaign structure and setup we would recommend to be able to maximize uh, each one of these channels. So we would suggest, firstly, making sure your measurement is all set up, whether that be with an AdWords SDK or third-party tracking, and then starting off with our two main networks and channels, display and search. These two have performed considerably uh, over the past uh, couple of months, and we're very confident that they work very well. So you would start off with those two campaigns, uh, you can optimize your search campaigns in week two by adding a few more keywords once you've got performance. And once those two are up and running, then you can experiment by running YouTube campaigns, uh, trying to get a bit more incremental reach, starting with similar lists to make sure that your targeting is tight. So we understand that traditional performance uh, marketing has been focused on optimizing each one of these channels individually. And for some companies, that's the right way to go. And for a lot of others, it's incredibly time-consuming and very, very difficult to do. So I'm absolutely delighted as well with the launch of Universal App Campaigns. It actually fully rolls out today. There will be a press release later on uh, this afternoon. Um, and what it enables you to do, as Miles pointed out, is to target across all the different networks through one simple campaign flow. The campaign flow is as easy as this. There are three steps to it. Firstly, you have to upload a few lines of text, a few different variations of text. Um, and a video, and a few uh, uh, image ads. You can input your locations, language, budget, um, target cost per install, and then ultimately you have to just enable the campaign and it'll run across all of Google's channels uh, targeting app install inventory. This is what the interface will look like. Um, as you can see on the left-hand side, there are four different variations of text, um, allowing Conversion Optimizer to, to optimize and choose the best one. You can input a YouTube URL, and it'll pull your YouTube video in directly. 
And on the right-hand side, you can see that your app icon and images are automatically pulled in through Google Play. So optimizing those is obviously very important. And once you enable those campaigns, it's really straightforward. Your ads, your bids, your banner distribution, and your targeting are all optimized automatically. We aim to get you the maximum volume at your target CPI. The initial beta testing of this has been fantastic, and we're delighted that it's, it's rolling out today. Uh, it'll hopefully make your lives a lot easier when it comes to user acquisition. Underlying all of this, as I said before, is data and insights. You can use some of Google's solutions, such as integrating uh, the AdWords SDK to track your conversions um, and measure them, and analytics for measuring in-app activity. Or alternatively, as many of you do, work with a third party. Uh, let us know, as we have close relationships with most, of, most of, of the third party tracking companies. Why do we measure? Of course, this is paid advertising, so you've got to make sure that your average LTV is greater than your average CPI. We know that one out of six users don't make a purchase within an app, and we know that 80% of users only use an app once after installing it. So app economics works when you know the lifetime value of your app, and then you work with the channel to acquire users at a lower value. So when we talk about lifetime value, this is a very, very simple example. But this is something that, as an advertising channel, we need to understand from you, is what actual value is that our users bringing to you. So if we look at a very basic case of a user over one year, or a set of users over a year, we can see that a user might have paid $5 on average um, within your app to purchase items. Perhaps you have an offline store, and they made an additional $5 purchase throughout the year in that offline store. And we know that those users, through reviews and ratings and uh, messaging apps, spread your app to others. So there's an uplift from word of mouth. So if we estimate that, on average, the, the, your, values, uh, your users are worth $11 to you a year, then we know that we have to pay less than that to acquire them for you to be ROI positive. So once we have identified what we're willing to pay for a user, we have to figure out how we can maximize that lifetime value and drive engagement. The clicker seems to be very stubborn today. There you go. Uh, so when we pulled our, uh, we surveyed another set of users to understand why they like using apps and what key commercial activities they use apps for. And you can see there that across the funnel, they like using apps for multiple different things. Everything from reading reviews by others all the way through to loyalty programs at the end of the funnel. So if you know by speaking to your users and by looking at your analytics, what users do within your app, you're able to then create engagement campaigns to try and drive them into that part of the funnel that they enjoy most. There are two ways in which you can create engagement campaigns at the moment. The simplest and easiest is auto-created auto lists. So all you have to do here is link your Google Play account to your AdWords account. And there are a number of auto-generated lists here that you can remarket to with specific messaging. This is the best and easiest way to try this out to see if you can generate value. If you get that right, then you can start looking at custom lists, where you can either import lists from Google Analytics, service, service server, or third-party integration. So once you've created your list, you understand what your users like, the last piece is tailoring messaging to them. So three examples are of messages that you could tailor to them. Um, if you're trying to get users to engage with your app, the first thing to do is to deliver to all of them content that can only be accessed or engaged with in the app. The second messaging is for users who may have lapsed and stopped using your app, and you want to get them back in. The best way to do this is to let them know that there are new features within your app that they can take advantage if they re-engage. And finally, what we see often is people uh, stop purchasing items, get to the cart, and then abandon the cart. You can target those in users specifically by offering them a discount that might be only applicable on that day to get them to complete that purchase. Uh, so as you can see, we've got two main takeaways uh, today. First, search as in play, fantastic results initially. And as of today, will be the launch of universal app campaigns, which will hopefully streamline and make your user acquisition and um, 
campaigns far easier. So if you want to chat about this, let me know. I'll be around, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.